Well, here's a data point 2200 made by Computer Terminal Corporation. This is an 8-bit microcomputer built with small-scale integrated circuits designed and built in the late 60s to replace the electromechanical typewriter. This uh, terminal is the first, probably the first 8-bit microcomputer and it is a programmable terminal. It was used as a programmable terminal to uh, actually write payroll checks by a chicken farmer. Probably the first use of a programmable terminal. This terminal was designed using, like I said, the eight, the um, small-scale integrated circuits. And the people that designed it wanted to make a microprocessor chip using the same logic as this 2200 uh, data point terminal. So the engineers went to Intel Corporation in the late 60s to ask them to design an 8-bit microprocessor chip. Robert Noyce was president of Intel at the time, and he thought it was a bad idea because it would uh, maybe cut into his sales as a marketer and builder of memory chips. But he agreed to design an 8-bit microprocessor chip for $50,000 based on the logic in this 2200 data terminal. So this was the start of the first 8-bit microprocessor chips. Uh, we'll take a look inside. It's quite an interesting uh, design inside of this uh, terminal. Now looking inside the 2200 terminal, we see it uh, actually looks very sturdy build, and it is very sturdy build. It weighs about 40 pounds, very heavy. Uh, very nicely laid out keyboard. Very rugged looking keys. Dense circuitry. There's four printed circuit cards down under this little power supply here. Four more large printed circuit cards down here under the CRT display. And uh, over a hundred small scale integrated circuits make up the computer here, the 8-bit microcomputer. The memory consists of four K of internal memory, plus these two cassette readers that can store about 130 kilobytes of uh, memory. Here's the internal memory. There's four kilobytes on each card, so that's a total of 16 kilobytes of uh, internal uh, read-write memory. And down in this area is the power supply and so forth for the CRT terminal. And here's the other side of those four cards that are really high density cards. They go all the way to the back of the terminal. If we move around and look at the back side, you got a lot of metal back here. Um, very big heat sink. It's one of the things that weighs a lot. It's got a fan in it, some regulating transistors, very heavy heat sink back here. So it's built uh, very nicely, a lot of mechanical work in it. And this was the start of the 8-bit microcomputer, the 8008 at Intel. Some other interesting things that happened along the way. Um, the Control Terminal Corporation also went to Texas Instruments to have them build a second source for their 8-bit microprocessor chip. Well, their chip never worked. Intel's chip was slow in being developed, so Control Terminal Corporation decided to just build this terminal with the small-scale integrated circuits rather than a microprocessor chip, which they did. And they gave up the rights to the microprocessor chip, also did not pay the $50,000 to Intel, gave up the rights to the chip, Intel continued to develop the chip, and as you know, it turned out to be the 8008, the exact code that was used in the development of this system. Uh, considered by some to be the worst business decision ever for Control Terminal Corporation to give up their intellectual rights to the microprocessor. So that's sort of the story of how the 8-bit microprocessor, the 8008 Intel chip, uh, became available in 1972.